Hello students, welcome you all uh, to a discussion on drawing. Already regarding this uh, drawing, we have completed a previous session where we have discussed uh, what is drawing, the procedure of drawing, the parameters, mechanism and other things. So in the last session, we have covered all these aspects. In today's session, we'll be discussing regarding what is tube drawing, different types of tube drawing, and how each one are different for which type of processes. These things will be dealing in detail. So in this session, we'll be studying all these things one by one. So we shall now move forward. So as I was telling you, we have discussed regarding drawing in the previous sessions, the procedure, mechanism and other things. And now we will be discussing regarding uh, what is tube drawing, the classifications for tube drawing and uh, regarding these classifications we will be going in detail. So in this session we will be discussing regarding all these terms as you go one by one. Now, as I was telling you, drawing is also a metal forming process where uh, you are drawing a workpiece or it is being pulled through a die to reduce the cross section of a given workpiece. Similar to that in a true drawing also, we are using it especially when we want to develop hollow profiles. So when you want to develop some hollow profiles, or some cylindrical hollow structures such that there may be in the form of some tubes of some different lengths, diameters or wall thicknesses. We are preferring this method that is a tube drawing method. So it is also a form of metal forming process itself but only the thing is when you want to develop some hollow profiles we are preferring this method. So generally in this method, we are taking initially one hot rolled tube. We are having one initially hot rolled tube. And this hot rolled tube, we are reducing its cross section to the other end of the die after cooling. So what happens? Already you have seen, if you have seen this very carefully that one end of the material, you can see here, this is the hollow structure. So you can see here, this part, this is entirely, this is the hollow structure and we are pulling this material, drawing this material and we are getting a tube of a hollow structure that is a hollow profile cylindrical in nature to different lengths and diameters. So initially what happens, a hot rolled tube which is there, this hot rolled tube, this hot rolled tube, we are using this one and this hot rolled tube is cooled such a way that one of its end it is uh, reduced to its cross section and it is uh, freely entered into the cavity it freely enters into the cavity that is at this particular part and from here the drawing action here or the pulling action is developed where on the, once the tube comes out, out of this die cavity so this is the die this is the die so there are two dies so the space between these two dies, it is the die cavity. So when it comes out of the die cavity, then with the help of a drawing bench equipment, the tube is being drawn. So generally, the hollow profiles which we are using here, these hollow profiles you can develop only once we are using a material. That material is nothing but it is known as a mandrel. So here to develop the hollow structures, we are using a material inside this hot structure that is the molten metal we call that as mandrel so here in this part this mandrel is being placed here so between such that it forms the cavity so in very simple words the mandrel is nothing but to develop a cylindrical structure on a metal forming process we are using a mandrel we are using a mandrel such a way that once the tube is being pulled and you can develop a tube of required diameter and length. 
So once we are using this tube drawing process, you can see that uh, once a tube comes out of the gravity, it can be easily gripped and the drawing, per, uh, drawing operation is being carried continuously to attain uh, the required length and diameter of a given tube. So in tube drawings, depending upon the use of a mantle, the classification we are doing, where we are using the drawing tubes, depending upon the methods which we are employing. The first method which we are going to study is the tube drawing without a mantle, which means we carry the tube drawing method where there is no mantle, we call it as even tube sinking method also. The second comes the tube drawing happening with a fixed mantle, that is the mantle is fixed in this position. The third comes tube drawing with a floating mandrel means the mandrel is being floating throughout the drawing process to form a cylindrical structure. And the last one is the tube drawing with a moving mandrel. So these are the things which we will be studying now in the next slides. So what you can say that for all these things, the mandrel is required except the first method. So let us see all these things one by one. Now, the first method is, as I was telling you, tube drawing without a mandrel. So here mandrel is not present. So in, you can say that if a tube drawing process is carried out in absence of a mandrel, I repeat the word, in absence of a mandrel or without mandrel, we call it as another name that is tube sinking also, or it is also known as pre tube drawing so keep this in mind sometimes it is asked in the examinations also so for a drawing process where the mantle is not used you call it as even a tube sinking method or it is known as a pre tube drawing method also so in very simple words here the process is developed only to form straight tubes so when you want to develop the straight tubes we are performing this method so and the tubes which are performing here they are having some finite length which can be done very easily using this method. So if you observe in this picture at the bottom, you can see here there is a tube. This is, this is the entry. You can see the tube is coming out of this one. And you can see here this plain white color structure. This is the thing, but this is the mandrel. This is the mandrel, sorry, this is not the mandrel. So just we are drawing with this material without the help of a mandrel here. So I repeat, here in this method, we don't have a mandrel. Instead of mandrel, we are drawing this one. We call it as a tube sinking method or even free tube drawing method also. So during the operation, what we are doing here is initially, initially we are cleaning the tube before it is being inserted into the die cavity. So we are cleaning the tube before it is inserted into the die cavity and the pointed end that is at this part, the pointed end, it is allowed to free entry into the hole of a drawing die. And once this pointed end, it is coming out, it is gripped with the help of an, a gripper such that the drawing equipment pulls this material, the drawing equipment, with the help of the drawing force, it pulls the material in this direction, that is uh, towards, away from this die cavity where the tube is being drawn. So as there is uh, no mantle in this method, we call this another name that is tube sinking method also. There is no mantle in this one. So compared to other methods, you can say that uh, this method is a cheaper in nature, that is, a, it is a least costly, cheaper in nature because mandrel is not there. But when we're using this one, when the mandrel is not there, if you see here the surfaces of these tubes, that is, the inner surfaces of these tubes, their dimensions are not accurate, such that sometimes the internal dimensions and the features they are difficult to control. You cannot have more accuracy. Because of this, what you can say that and there is excessive sinking happening and this excessive sinking develops daily main to the thickness of the wall. So if you observe here in this picture, especially at these points, you can see here the wall thicknesses, it is larger. So what happens here, due to this wall thickness, there is excessive sinking happening. 
and increase in this wall thickness, it leads to the progressive cracking process. So the cracking formation, it goes on continuously. So once again, I repeat here, if we don't use a mandrel for a tube drawing process, we call it as a free tube drawing or a tube sinking process also. Initially, one end of the metal, it is been taken out of the die cavity by thoroughly cleaning. And this pointed end is pulled out with the help of a drawing force using a, a gripper, which is fixed on drawing equipment. And as it is being proceeded in the forward direction, the metal is being drawn. But the only thing is the internal dimensions are not accurate because there is no ma mandrel here. So due to this, what happens? There is excessive sinking happening. And this excessive sinking is due to the wall thickness, the wall thickness which you can see here, this gray colored structure, black structure. So in, again, increasing this one, it leads to one more crack formation also. This is regarding tube drawing or tube sinking method. Tube sinking method. Let us move to the next method. This is a tube drawing with fixed mandrel. Sometimes uh, this method, we call it as one of the oldest method of drawing also, the tube drawing with a fixed mantle. Here, using, here we are using a mantle, but its position is fixed in the near the die cavity. So you can see here in both the pictures here, this is one mantle which is there, which is a cylindrical in shape. And then if you see here, it is conical in shape. So this method we are preferring from the in old days itself. So therefore we call this method as the oldest method of even tube drawing also. So whatever the desired internal structure we need, that it may be the diameter or the features, whatever we require, those features, they can be developed in the form of a cylindrical shape or in the form of a conical shape using these mandrels. And these mandrels, they are fixed near the die cavities. So initially, these mantles we are positioning them we are positioning them with the help of a uh, near the die land and they are clamped in such a way that uh, to the drawing equipment once the diameter of the mandrel once the diameter of the mandrel is equal to the inner diameter of the tube once the diameter of the mandrel so if you observe here carefully yes the diameter of this mandrel, this is, it is equal to the inner diameter of the tube, then the drawing process begins. So here also, as I told, initially we are cleaning the tube, pointing the end to the, for the allow to free entry of the, to the drawing die, where it can be pulled very easily, such, such a way that the metal can be taken out very easily. So here also in the initial in the operation, when the metal comes out, it is pointed and it is being taken away with the help of an die that is gripped to the drawing equipment. And if you observe here, there is a, some space developed. We call this a hollow space as annulus. We call this a hollow space as this one. This is space we call it as annulus, this one. So this space, that is this space, we call this as annulus. So here in this process, when the metal is being pulled out through the annul, and the metal is being pulled, we can see there is an annulus developed between the die and the mandrel. And uh, this results in the shrinking to its outer diameter. Similarly, at the same time, if you observe carefully in these pictures, you can see that uh, uh, there is inner con diameter which is conforming to the diameter of the mandrel. So now you can say that whatever the diameter of the mandrel is there, it is equal to the inner diameter of the tube itself. This is the part. Both are the same itself. So that is the reason that we say there is a hollow space. So here the shaping of the inner surface of the tube, it mainly depends upon uh, inner, whatever the surface is developed, that is the inner surface of this tube here. It depends upon which particular point, that is uh, how it is exiting. So if you observe here at this space when compared to the exit of this die cavity. So at this particular space, that is at this particular region, you can see that uh, the shaping of the inner surface is very, very important role. 
So if you observe in both the pictures carefully, if you observe in both the pictures carefully, the bandra head is placed nearly the surface at the exit of the stye cavity itself. So you will get good surface and shaping of the inner surface is also very accurate in this process. So this process, it is a little bit slower in nature, but what you can say that as you are getting an uniform cross-section area here, the problems of area reductions are very limited. That is the area reductions are very, very less. So when compared to the previous case, that is true drawing without a mandrel, we can get here good surface finish, better inner surface finish. And apart from that, you can say that when compared to other processes also, as we are having a cylindrical or conical shaped mandrels, the inner surface is very, very improved in nature. The surface is very, very improved in nature. So this is regarding true drawing with the fixed mandrel process. Let us move on to the next type of method. That is true drawing with floating mandrel. So once you have gone through the fix, uh, the, uh, that is uh, without a mandrel and a fixed mandrel type, the other one that is a floating mandrel almost is having the same procedure. Only the things is we are using this method only when the applications are different. So as I said that when you want to develop a pipe or tubes of a length more than 1000 feet in nature, it is greater than 1000 feet, you cannot go for fixed mandrel. That time we use this floating mandrel process. So you can see here, the mandrel which you are using here, it is a floating type of mandrel. So when you are using this floating type of mandrel, automatically for larger lines, that is more than 1000 feet, you can develop good surface finish. The quality of the tubing studies at the inner side and outer side, it is improving. And this improvement it is, is throughout for even larger lengths also. So that is the reason that we are using here a floating kind of a mandrel. So in very simple words, what you can say that if you want to develop a tube whose length is greater than 1000 feet, then we go for this type of a floating mandrel where there is better inner quality surface finish for infinite lengths or you can say that higher lengths. So the important thing now here lies is regarding how this mandrel is positioned or how it can be placed in between the tube and the eye cavities. That is, if you observe carefully in the picture, the floating mandrel which is there, which, is, which are seeing here, this floating mandrel, how it is there, it is being held between the, due to the frictional forces, due to the frictional forces, it is being held or been suspended due to the frictional forces between what? The tube, that is the frictional force between the tube and the mandrel, that is, due to the frictional forces, it is being, being held between the mandrel and the tube. So, when you are applying some of the axial forces, which is due to the frictional and some pressure also, then what happens? There is a, a plug developed, which is in the form of a floating manner, that is a floating plug. And this floating plug, it is sufficient enough that it can be drawn using a bull block that is in the form of a, wires to be coiled. So here in this method, especially in this method, we are preferring the tooling to be more critical when compared to other processes as there is a type of a floating mandrel. So here the bearing region in the die, if you observe carefully, in this particular type of a method, in this type of particular type of method, that is in this particular position here, Mm. Yes, students, here, this part. I think it's not visible. Uh, I will use some other color so that it becomes visible to you. Or wait, I will rub it off. Yes. Um, preferably now you can see here. Uh, not at visible, wait. I'll go for the red color itself. Yeah. This position, if you see here, this you call it as the bearing region. So in the floating mandrel process, the bearing region, what you are seeing here, it must, it, uh, it is long, it is, it, actually it must be very long enough. 
so that it helps for the mandrel to sit in the tube internal diameter. So here you can see here in this particular process, bearing region it should be long enough, which helps for the movement of the mandrel and it can very easily sit inside the internal tube diameter. But apart from this, as we are using a floating mandrel, there are some frictional forces. You have to keep in mind that uh, due to this friction, we should have a continuous and fine lubrication with cleanliness such that uh, if this is not carried in the float, uh, 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 probability of floating of this mantle becomes very, very less. So you should have sufficient lubrication as well as cleaning in this particular type of method. This is regarding tube drawing with floating mandrel. Now let's move on to the next one that is tube drawing with moving mandrel. So there is not much more difference between the floating and the moving dry mandrel. But if you observe carefully, the entire mandrel, if you observe, if you observe here this entire mandrel, which here the length and bore diameter of the moving mantle both are same in nature. So in this case, what you can say that the length and the bore diameter for the moving mantle they are almost they are almost equal to the finished tube structure. Therefore, when we are using a moving mantle, it is developing a drawn tube structure itself due to the friction and pressure. And whatever is being developed, it is uh, along with the movement. So as the mandrel moves outside, you can see here, as the mandrel is being moved outside, it develops the tube of having the same length and bore diameter itself. So the drawing operation, if you observe, almost is similar to that of a fixed mandrel itself. But only the thing is, uh, this we are using when <clears throat> we require a reeling process. For a reeling process, we are using this one. These are the things regarding tube drawing with moving mandrel. So, these are the things you need to know regarding tube drawings. So, as I was telling you, drawing, drawing itself, this is another part that is a tube drawing to develop a hollow cylindrical structure. So, surfaces, we are preferring this method. Depending upon our applications, that is for longer length or for good surface finish or for normal applications, we are having the classifications that is a tube drawing without a mandrel, with the fixed mandrel, floating mandrel, and the moving mandrel. So, these are the things you need to know. If you have any doubts, you can email me to my mail ID, which I will leave in the chat box. And if you have any doubts, you can contact through me through my email ID also. Thank you, students.